Hello everyone. In this short video we're going to take a look at volumetric gaps within your Civil 3D corridor. What you see on the screen is a corridor that has a bridge section. You can see how it narrows at the bridge section. And I have the corridor surface activated and displayed in triangle form. And there is already a gap in the triangles. So to do this we basically went into our definition and created a hide boundary using this particular shape. So this is one method to make a gap in your proposed surface or corridor. This works great. So no triangle shown and the sample lines, they do not compute any surface data throughout there. But there's one particular issue that arises using this method only. And that's when it comes to end area volumes. So let's take a look at that. First thing I'm going to go to my corridor and look at the corridor properties. You can see my bridge section is from 962 to 1061.99. And that is exactly where the shape is drawn. So I'm going to go ahead and split my screen so that we can see the beginning of the bridge section and cross section view. So there's 962, exactly where the bridge starts here. Okay, so let's take a look at the volumes doing nothing. So the only thing we have, we've trimmed the triangles or hide, created a hide boundary to eliminate triangles in this area. So let's just see what the status is on, with that only. So we're going to generate volume report. We already have the material list created. It's just uh, earthwork. So we pick the earthwork style sheet. And if we go down to 962, you can see that I have an area, this is fill area, of 6972. That's the green box you can see here. 6972, but that only equates to 0 0.05 cubic yards of fill because this is computed over a very small station range. You can see we had a uh, sample line just before that. And so that was that really helped us to drive down that volume and it added very little to this is the cumulative field column here. The problem is is the next station. So it basically says okay between 962 and 975 I'm going to average the field area on those two which is 69.72 divided by 2 and then multiply that over this distance between these two stations. And that will give us 16.78 cubic yards of field. And that goes right on to the cumulative. And that does not really exist. So that is really not what we intended when we created that hide boundary. So we've got an erroneous volume here. And the same thing transitioning out. You can see my first or the end of where the bridge section is. I've got 6152 here. But because it, the, it doesn't know that there's a gap before it there, it says, okay, well... Let me transition between this station range, 61.52 divided by 2, convert to cubic yards, it'll be 13.66. And that goes right on to the cumulative field total. So let's see how we can correct this. I'm just going to stay in the sample line, go into the group properties. Notice I have my material list here, the master material list. I'm going to click on gap. I'm going to add a gap. This is exactly what this is for. I'm going to do 962 to 1061.99. Hit OK. I'm going to hit OK. And that affects the entire material list until I make another modification. Notice it did not turn off the volume at 962, so that's because the surface ends abruptly there. So I'm still going to get a slice at 962. So it, I said in the box, the gap that I created, I said from 962 on, I won't. I want it to be a volumetric gap. So let's compute the volumes and see if there's a difference. Generate volume report after I click on the sample line. Make sure Earthwork style sheet. And let's review the difference. So now at 962, we still have that fill volume of our area of 6972 that creates a fill volume of that. And so we're at 1077.82 for cumulative. But then notice at 975, this is what we wanted. We want a zero here on the volume between these two, 962 and 975. 
So that's perfect. And notice the 107782 continues past, which we want it to, the last part of our gap, which was 106199. So we completely controlled the volume there, and we said we want no volumes capped in that particular region. One other note, if I go back to the group properties of the sample line, I mentioned before this is working for the entire list, but I can go into individual sub materials here. Let's say I had structural volumes, for example. I can highlight whichever one that I'm interested in, click the gap, and I can turn it off for that particular criteria of the, the overall material. So I don't have to compute for everything in the material list because I can disable the gap here. And not want to go deep into it, but there's also a run in and run out distance. If you look at the help file, this basically controls the transition between the gap and back into the material on both sides. So take a look at that. I didn't use that in this case, but something other, something else that's important to note. I want to do one other change. I'm going to go back to the top here, change the gap. Just want to show you the control you have. So if you need to tighten up your gap window, and let's say at 962, I don't want, I didn't want that volume at all on that particular section. Well, what I can do is I don't have to change my hide boundary. I can just go here and say 6199. So that's the sample line just before the uh, bridge starts. As soon as we hit OK and OK, watch on the right. It immediately took away that volume. And of course, when I go to generate a volume report, go to Earthwork. You can see now at 962, I'm going to be zero all the way across. So it gives me total flexibility to control when and how I have surface data in my end area volume count. So really, I didn't need this hide boundary here. This hide boundary is very nice for planometrics and plan view and drawing production. But for actual end area volumes, I didn't need it at all. I could have completely used the gap control within the sample line. So the goal here was to take a look at how to control your volumetric gaps and corridors. I hope this has been beneficial.